Hey everyone and welcome back to another Unreal C++ tutorial. In this video we'll be covering the main specifiers you'll see when implementing the properties and the variables. So these tend to be the specifiers that you'll be using the most often and are therefore the most useful to understand. They're also going to be a little bit easier to get an understanding of and then you can look at the documentation to build upon your knowledge of the other specifiers which are available. Also, if you've watched any of the other videos in the playlist, you've probably even noticed me use some of the specifiers in passing. And like with many of the topics, there's going to be a lot more to cover than I can in just a single video. So the documentation, everything I just mentioned, I'll provide links for that in the description down below. So if we start with the most easily understandable specifier, and they are going to be the property specifiers. These use keywords to specify how a property behaves with various aspects of the engine and the editor. So I've created an entire new actor class to show some of these demonstrations. And to begin, we can look at how I'm exposing the static mesh as a visual representation for the actor. First of all, to define a property specifier, we simply need to include the U property declaration above the property or the variable that you would like to affect. You then place your specifiers inside of the U property argument parameters. The first specifier that we can see here is the visible anywhere modifier. And as the name suggests, this is a visibility modifier that indicates that the property will now be visible in all windows, but cannot be edited. If you wanted to edit this, which is usually not the case for components, then you just want to replace this with edit anywhere, which is then an edit modifier. And edit modifiers are most often seen with variables to allow you to update things such as floats, integers, and booleans in the editor. So if we hop over to the documentation, it makes note here that edit modifiers and visibility modifiers cannot be used together. And you can also only ever specify one edit or visibility modifier per U property. Whilst on the documentation page, we can also take a look at the second half of the visibility and edit specifiers, which are anywhere, defaults only, and instance only. As you can see again, there are a lot more than just these three but these will be the ones that you'll see most often when looking through the default classes, which again makes it very useful to at least know these. So back in the actor example class, you can see that I have three public floats and the reason for them being public will be relevant a little bit later. Uh, at the moment, however, the most important differences between them are the visible anywhere, defaults only, and the instance only specifiers. And also notice that they're all named in relation to their specifier to make it a little bit easier to track them back in the engine. So if we go on over to the example actor blueprint, which is derived from the C++ class we've just been looking at, we can see to the side that we can see the visible float and the default float, but not the instance float. And that's because visible anywhere will be shown, as the name suggests, anywhere. Defaults only will only be shown in the default class, which really means the blueprint editor. And finally, instance only shows only in the instances of your class, so those things which are placed in the world. So if I just quickly go over to the test map and I'll drag in the example actor. If I select one of these and go to the example actor section, we can see two floats again. This time it's going to be the visible float for visible anywhere and the instance float for instance only. But this time we don't see the default floats because we're not in the default blueprint graph. So at the moment we can only view these and not edit them due to the visibility specifier. So these would be great if they're just for debugging and tracking the variable updates, but not allowing anyone to actually edit them in the editor. So back in the code file, if we quickly change these to edit specifiers whilst keeping the same archetype specifiers, and then back in the editor and the uh, actor class again, we can see that these same variables are now visible in the same places, but we can of course now edit the float values freely. So these specifiers are useful to understand for kind of personal sanity and also especially when working with a team. Uh, where you could be handing your blueprints to designers with less understanding of the code. So as a quick example, if you know that something might be needed as a global variable set in the blueprints, but that it should never differ between the instances set in the world, like a health value, that you always want it to be that default value set in the base class, then you can set that to be the defaults only to avoid any potential confusion during development. Now the next thing we want to go over is the category and the meta specifiers. So category specifiers just allow you to bunch all of your properties into a kind of neat nested category hierarchy. And this just provides easier maintenance in the editor. For example, you could put all of your floats in a float category and all of your character traits in a trait category. By default, if you haven't specified a category, all properties will fall under the category sharing the name of your class. 
So back in the code file again, I'm just going to put all of the public floats in a public category, which is declared by simply inserting the word category, then equals, and the name of the category, and again, separating this with a comma. I'll then just scroll down a bit to where I have some of the private float variables ready and uncomment these. And I'll do the same again, but I'll place these in a private category. And this then leads us to the meta specifiers or the metadata specifiers. And these control how classes, interfaces, structs, enums, values, and functions can behave in different sections of the engine and the editor. In this example, I'm actually using a meta specifier that isn't easily found in the documentation for some reason, and that's the allow private access equals true. And that's the main distinguishing feature that you'll find with meta specifiers is, is that you'll have the thing you're specifying. So in this case, whether the private access is allowed, then followed by the answer in quotation marks. And this isn't an exact rule, but most of the meta specifiers that you'll be looking at, although they can be found in other formats, you tend to see them in a format similar to this. So the reason that this private access specifier is being used and the reason that it's important, and again, one that you'll probably be seeing quite often, is that it's the only way that we're able to expose or view properties that we want to see in the editor, but also keep them private. Uh, and as mentioned in the video on access modifiers, for code maintenance and security, it's always preferable to keep the properties private where possible. So I'm just going to recompile this again and show the results. Note here too that if you didn't have the ally private access modifier on the private variables, then the compilation would actually completely fail with error warnings. Back in the editor once more, we can now see that the private and the public sections with all of their variables are showing in the correct places. And one final thing to note is the second set of specifiers that I've been using on the public variables, which were the blueprint read only and the blueprint read write. I've also just noticed too that I've placed the category specifiers for the publics in a kind of a strange place. This accidentally demonstrates that it doesn't really matter where they're defined, but generally in examples and the existing engine code as well, you'll see them in the order of the edit or visibility specifiers, then the blueprint write specifiers, the category, and then the metadata specifiers. So I'll just correct that here so it looks kind of like the code you'll usually see. As for the final thing, the blueprint writes, we can see here that most of mine have been set to blueprint read only, and one is set to blueprint read write purely for demonstration purposes. This will control when being called in the blueprint class how much access we have to the property. So that's whether we can get and set the variable or only get the variable. So in the blueprint class, if I search for public, we can see that I have the option to get all of the floats, but only set the default float, which was the only one on which I added the blueprint read write specifier, whilst all of the others were blueprint read only. I've also set the mesh component to be read only. So if I drag this into the graph, you'll notice it doesn't even give the option to choose between a getter and a setter. It will just bring in a getter node. So these again can be really powerful when you're setting up a lot of logic in a C++ class. But as a developer, you know that it will never be altered outside of the C++ functionality. However, you might also know that a designer will want to check the variables at different points between the gameplay to drive some other logic in blueprints. So again, to avoid potential overrides of important values, you could just set it to be read-only to expose it, but also keep the value of it safe. So these are just several of the, uh, the many specifiers, and that's just within the U properties. In the next videos, we're going to be looking at things like the U functions as well. So do be sure to read through the documentation just to find out if there's anything else that you might find useful, anything else in there which might be quite interesting with some of the available implementations. As always, if you've enjoyed the video or find it useful, please do leave a like and share the video around that really helps and of course do consider subscribing to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel as ever thanks for watching and i will see you all next time